Hey, Diane, you there? We're getting divorced, you got that? Uh, is that you, Mark? What the hell are you talking about? This is kind of out of the blue, don't you think? You heard me. I said I'm divorcing you. I can't go on living with you any longer. Stop off on your way back from work and pick up the divorce forms from City Hall, would you? Hold on a second, Mark. Have you lost your mind? Just because you say we're getting divorced, I can't just say, okay, sure. I mean, come on, it's not like we're still in high school. And what about our daughters? Have you thought about them? They're only five and six years old and you're just going to dump them and go about your merry way? You are a father, for God's sake. It's not as simple as just breaking it off. Don't you think you should be a little more responsible than that? The problem are the girls, our two daughters. Excuse me, what are you talking about? Uh, is this about what I think it's about? That we're able to have girls, but I can't give birth to boys? Is that what you're saying again? That's exactly what I'm saying. I didn't even have to bring it up, which means you have a problem with it too. I don't have a problem with my daughters one bit, but you keep bringing it up so often that it's always on my mind. And when this divorce talk came up, that was the first thing that came to my mind. I hope you're not thinking that I did it on purpose and gave birth to two girls. If you are, you've totally lost it, Mark. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, how could you control it? But your family, you got three brothers, but then you only give birth to girls? It kind of gets frustrating. So sometimes I do think that maybe you might be using some sort of method to have girls. Like eating certain foods, or maybe there's a drug, I don't know. I start to get a little suspicious is all. Don't you remember that I explained it all to you a bunch of times? The father's sperm determines whether a baby will be born as a boy or a girl. I showed you that scientific journal online, don't you remember? Yeah, but you're the one that's giving birth. It has to be your fault. Oh boy, this is getting nowhere. Anyways, whatever you say, we need to get divorced no matter what. There's just no turning back. Why are you so determined to get divorced? I can't understand this urgency. I have to get a divorce because my girlfriend just gave birth to a baby boy, that's why. Wait, back up a bit, would you? Your girlfriend? Yeah, that's right. We run a small family business. We need a male heir to take over the business someday. Our daughters just won't do. I met this girl and she gave me a boy. So the logical thing to do is to take her as my wife. I tried with this woman several times and it finally happened. After my third try, I was finally able to bring a boy into this world. It's a miracle! You're making this infidelity sound like it's normal. You were cheating on me for crying out loud. Have you no shame? I don't care what you do. You can have custody of the two girls. Just hurry up and give me that damn divorce. As for child support and whatever compensation I have to pay, I'll pay it. I don't want to have to deal with you kicking up a fuss about it later on. But that said, you still got complaints? It's pointless talking with you. You seem to have your mind set on this. Yeah, you sure got that right. All right, have it your way. I'll give you that divorce. But you're not getting away with just paying. I will have my lawyer handle everything just in case, if you don't mind. I said I would pay for their education and compensation to you. Isn't that enough? Let's just get it over with. Didn't you hear me? I said just in case. If I don't let my lawyer handle it, you may just take off without paying. I mean, how can I trust someone who cheated on me, right? Do you really think I would simply take your word for it? Anyway, I want everything in writing. I want to leave a clear record of everything that transpired. What are you trying to say, that I'm at fault here? If you don't agree to it, forget about getting divorced. Oh, and as for the house and all our joint assets, that will be divided up equally. My lawyer will work that out. I suggest you get a lawyer too, Mark. A lot of paperwork. You don't want to get screwed later on. Huh? You want me to hire a lawyer? Yeah, I would recommend that you do. Now that we've decided, I'm packing my things and taking the kids to my parents' place tonight. Oh, I get it. You knew this was coming. All you wanted all along was money. You didn't love me at all. It was all just the greenbacks. You know what, Diane? I'm actually glad I was able to see you for what you really are. A selfish, money-hungry she-devil. You know why divorces are expensive? Because they're worth it. Hey, Diane, what's up? It's been a while. Uh, is that you, Mark? Yeah, must be at least seven years. What do you want? 
I saw you at the general hospital this afternoon at the maternity ward. I was just wondering what you were doing there is all. Oh, yeah. I did see someone that looked like you sitting next door. You were seeing the optometrist, right? Getting bad eyesight in your old age or something? So, how have you been? Are you concerned about your daughters? Is that why you're contacting me after all these years? Huh? Why would I be concerned about the girls? You got that handled, right? Have you already forgotten? We agreed to keep this line open, so if you had any concerns about our daughters, you could contact me here. This is the first time, so I figured you wanted to know how the kids were doing. No, nothing like that. <laughs> I have no interest whatsoever in the girls. They probably don't even remember me. <laughs> then what the hell do you want? I'm in no mood to hear your brainless nonsense. Well, when I saw you there, your tummy looked pretty big, and... You're in the maternity ward, which can only mean that you're pregnant, am I right? I really have no obligation to tell you, but yeah, that's right. I'm pregnant. Eight months. I remarried about three years ago. You probably know that through our lawyers. Yeah, he sent me a message about it. But what's with this husband of yours? Keep my husband out of this, would you? You have no right criticizing my husband. He is the best thing that's ever happened to me. He accepted my daughters as if they were his own. He's a wonderful and considerate person, unlike some people I know. Yeah, well, that's fine and dandy, but I'm just surprised that he would marry someone that can't give birth to a boy. And another thing, my lawyer told me that he's the oldest in the family. And like my folks, they run a business too. Is he going to have one of your daughters take over the business one day? Good luck with that. <laughs> so you're already eight months in, huh? Knowing you, I bet you're expecting another girl. What the hell are you going to do with three girls? Just another useless mouse to feed. I can't believe you, Diane. You're doomed to only have girls. I guess it's in the cards, huh? <laughs> Seems a foregone conclusion that you're going to end up alone with three girls. I bet you've got it all worked out with your lawyer, I suppose. Again, I have no obligation to tell you this, but just so you're aware, my husband's older sister is set to take over the family business. Excuse me, his older sister? Are you serious? Now, why would they have a woman take over the business? Are they nuts? That's simply because his sister is way more competent in business. She grew up helping her folks run the place. It was the logical choice, that's all. But she's a woman! Seems like a very risky move. They're not like your family, Mark. They're not as narrow-minded. They are more concerned about competence, not gender. Anyway, my husband runs his own business. He's too busy with his own problems. He doesn't meddle in the family business. Yeah, to each his own, I suppose. But the fact of the matter is, she's a woman. The future looks bleak in my opinion. <laughs> my other son just turned two last week. Huh, wait, what? Yeah. About a year after we got married, we had a beautiful baby boy. Just turned two, like I said. Cutest kid in the entire world. No way, you have a two-year-old boy? How did you give birth to a boy? I thought you were a girl-only type. Please, Mark, stop with that nonsense, would you? If you don't mind, let's cut this short. This is getting tedious. Please, no more random texts. Only for emergencies. Please. Goodbye, Mark. Diane, answer me right this minute. I'm not kidding around. I want you to hand over one of the girls. She's my daughter. Pardon me? Are you out of your mind? You don't care which, the older one or the younger? It really doesn't matter? I'll stop by tomorrow to pick her up. Everything's ready by 9 a.m., you got that? Decide which one you plan to hand over. Like I said, either will do. Have you totally gone insane, Mark? Why the hell would I give you one of my children? Huh, why not? Are you seriously asking me why? She's not some toy you can borrow, for God's sake. You were the one that said you didn't want the girls because your new woman gave birth to a boy, right? What was that all about? In the past seven years, you never even came to visit them. And now you want one of them? You've really gone off the deep end, Mark. I'm not going to comply to such an unreasonable demand. These are my daughters you're talking about. You lay a hand on them, you better be ready for the consequences. Are you telling me you can't help me out of a dire situation? We used to be married, Diane. The least you could do is help out your ex. Dire situation? What the hell are you talking about, Mark? It's about my son. He was not my son after all. 
excuse me? Not your son? I, I don't get it. I caught my wife having an affair, so just in case, I had a DNA test done on my son, and it turns out that he wasn't my son after all. For seven years, I treated him like my own flesh and blood. The father was a guy she met eight years ago before we married. It's, he fathered this kid. He's my real son. Oh, really? How nice. So what's this got to do with me and my daughters? Well, after we got divorced seven years ago, I got really sick. Caught some weird virus, and as a result, I wasn't able to have kids. So I talked with my folks on what to do going forward, and what we decided on was that you give up one of your daughters and, after a while, have her marry an appropriate guy. They will eventually have a boy, and he'll someday take over the business. So I need you to agree on this. If I don't have an heir, I may not be able to continue running the family business. You are out of your mind, Mark. I can't believe what I just heard. What total rubbish. What'd you say? I said it's total rubbish. I almost wanted to smack this phone against the wall. You have no right to talk to me that way, Diane. I told you when I remarried, but let me refresh your memory because you've clearly forgotten. I told you that my husband has officially adopted my daughters. They are no longer your kids. You gave up that right a long time ago. What? He adopted them? That means... That's right. Even if you're biologically related, legally, you're not their father. There is nothing you can do to force them to live with you, Mark. They are not your children anymore. You never wanted them anyway. And it's a little too late for all this. Hold on a second, I'm not finished! Then terminate the whole adoption BS and give me back one of my daughters! You got kids and another on the way? You won't miss it if I take one, what's the big deal? Uh, are you smoking something? Hey, tell you what, I'll take both of them off your hands, and then you can concentrate on bringing up your two new kids. What do you say? Come to think of it, if I have both of them, one can be used for a plan B if need be. I think I'm going to have you officially institutionalized. You have totally lost it, Mark. Pretty good idea, if I say so myself. You know what, Mark? If there is anybody in this world that should never have kids, that's you. What do you think your children are? Baseball cards to be traded? Holy crap. You need to see a shrink, mister. What are you babbling about? I'm saying I will never, and I mean never, hand my daughters over to you. I would die before I ever do that. <laughs> Okie dokie. All the preparations are set to get back together with you, Diane. Oh, please, not again. What is it this time, Mark? You're not getting the kids. I know you don't want to hand over the kids. I'll come to you. Or shall I say, you come to me? We get married again, and then we're all good to go, right? Wrong. Oh, you're worried about the wife and my former so-called son. I already kicked them out, so no worries. Move in any time you like. From today forward, you will become my wife again. You have a bright future ahead of us, Diane. You can't be serious. Can you hold on a second? I'm going to call the mental hospital. Stop joking around. I'm serious. Oh, and when you come here, only bring the girls. You can leave the other kid with your ex-husband. Let me be perfectly clear, Diane. I have no intention of adopting that new kid of yours. If you cannot accept these terms, I'm sorry, Diane, but I will not be able to reconcile with you. Sorry, but you won't be my wife again. But whichever is the case, I'm still going to go pick up one of my daughters, or maybe even both. You understand me? Hey, a, a thought just crossed my mind. Do you even know where I live? Well, how'd you think I'm a total moron? At your parents' place, of course. Think about it for a second, Diane. You're at the local maternity ward at the local hospital. Your parents' place is 30 minutes away. Where else would you be? <laughs> Use your common sense. <laughs> I was back home just to give birth near my folks. We don't live there. You get what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so what? Let me ask you this, Mark. When was it that you saw me at the maternity ward? I told you I was eight months pregnant then, so how many months have passed since then? Uh, I guess that was a little over three months ago. That means I don't live with my folks and live in a completely different place. I already gave birth to a beautiful child, and I'm back at my husband's place. Wait, stop right there. You don't live with your folks? That's right. So don't go barging over to my parents' place and demand that they hand over the girls because neither I nor my kids are there. 
And for your information, I have no intention of remarrying you. All right, all right, so you moved. So what? Hurry up and give me the new address. I'll drive over to pick you guys up. Come on, stop giving me the runaround, Diane. Excuse me? I, I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. I just finished getting my folks on board with this. They finally agreed to me remarrying you. So come on, stop trying to duck the issue. I know you secretly want to. So come, address please. Mark, I'm gonna say this one last time. I have zero intention of getting back together with you. Right, so just give me the damn address, would ya? This delaying tactic is really getting on my nerves, Diane. Delaying tactic? Boy, you are delusional. I'm not going to remarry you, Mark. Diane, read the line carefully before you reply, would ya? I'm saying I'll take you and your daughters back, can't you understand? I'm doing you a huge favor. I'm going out on a limb for you guys. I get so upset. I thought you'd be jumping with joy. Why would I be jumping for joy, for God's sake? Huh? My two daughters and my two sons I had with my current husband are all my children, and I love them dearly. I will never give them up for anything in the world. You understand me, you creep? What? The kid you just had was a boy. You now have two boys? Are you serious? Stop changing the subject. Like I said a million times, I have no intention of remarrying you, Mark. The thought alone makes me nauseous. Nauseous? Are you kidding me? And one more thing. I don't plan on divorcing my husband anytime soon. I love him. Why would I divorce the man I love? All I'm interested in is my family. I want them to be happy. That's all that matters to me. I don't want a creep like you ruining this family, so please, just get lost. Come on, Diane, relax. I need you and the girls. Please help me out here. If I don't do something about it now, my cousin will end up taking over the business. I just can't have that. Oh yeah? Really? You know what? That sounds like a much better option. Pardon me? Your cousin, huh? That could only mean your cousin that lives back east, right? He would make a pretty good boss. Your grandfather would probably be happy with him running things. Are you suggesting that he would be better than me? Yeah, I guess I am. Anyway, you don't need my daughters. Your cousin would be more than adequate to take over. What's all the fuss? You make it sound like it's the end of the world. Well, that means I won't be able to keep my current status. As... I really think the right person should take over. Whoever is more competent. I think it would be better for business. And your cousin seems to fit the bill perfectly. You make it sound like I can't do my job. Can you really do the job, though? Didn't seem like it even back then. What did you just say? Okay, I guess that's it then. All problems solved. No, the problem is not solved. I really don't want to have to deal with your nonsense again, so please contact my lawyer for any further issues. As soon as I get a reply from my lawyer, I'm going to be blocking this line. Have to do everything legally, you know. No, come on, Diane. Don't you dare cut me off. This will be the last and final message. Goodbye, Mark. A few days later, I was finally able to block my line. Now my ex won't be able to contact me any longer. I suppose that pissed him off royally, and he immediately called my parents, screaming and shouting about God knows what. He threatened to talk to my daughters and reveal that my new husband is not their father. I had already sat my daughters down even before we were married and told them that their new father was not their biological father. And they were fine with that. As a matter of fact, they were overjoyed when he announced that he would adopt them. Truth be told, my daughters love their new father. My mom explained that there are no secrets in our family. That's why we're a happy and content family. It seems everything Mark tries fizzles out. His frustration level is probably out of this world. I immediately contacted my lawyer and made sure there was no more correspondence from him. He no longer has any connection to this family, and I want to keep it that way. I heard that because of his mismanagement of the family business, he was eventually removed from his position and replaced by his more sensible cousin. He wasn't able to stay long at his parents' business working as one of the staff. His pride and conceit just wouldn't allow it, as you can probably imagine. <laughs> Last I heard, he took some part-time job out of town and lives in some low-rent apartment trying to make ends meet. 
Hi, sister. Long time no see. <laughs> what, Anissa? We haven't talked ever since you left home after you graduated high school. It's been almost five years, right? Wow, I got a text from the person I least wanted to get a text from. What? You're so mean. That's not something you should say to your adorable sister. You're not adorable. Every time something happens, you make up these weird fantasies and start smirking to yourself. You even spread a rumor once that I was dating someone I didn't even like, right? My last two years of high school were a mess because you came along. Huh? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Besides, it's a bad habit to keep talking about what happened in the past. You're right, I guess. It is in the past. <laughs> Which means that my biological sister is now someone from my past that I stopped caring about five years ago. What? Bye. Hey, hold on. You see, I texted you to tell you about my wedding. You might cry when you see the name of my fiancé on the invitation I sent you, though. You still have to come, though, because you're my sister after all. Hi, Ala. I didn't get your reply to my wedding invitation yet. What? Oh, you said something about you getting married, right? I didn't get an invitation. Huh? Maybe you got the address wrong? What? Your new address in N City was left to us by you as a note, and I'm pretty sure that's where I sent it. I don't live in N City anymore. I moved three times over these past five years because of new jobs or relocation and stuff, which means I no longer live in N City, which my company assigned me to at the beginning. I don't think the Postal Service is going to be able to deal with it, so the invitation you sent me will probably be returned. Hmm. Oh, I get it. I see through your lies, Ala. Huh? I see. I don't blame you. You don't want to come anymore because you found out who my fiancé was, right? I told you I didn't get an invitation. But you need to come to the wedding. You know his family is a very high-class family, right? I can't let him think that the sister of his wife, who's going to be a part of his family soon, is a vagabond who ran away from home five years ago and is also so heartless and inconsiderate as to not come to her adorable sister's wedding. His mother's really strict, so I need to make a good impression. So you must come. Even if you tell me all that, I don't even know who the groom is. It's written on the invitation, right? <laughs> Stop lying. I know you had a good look at it. <laughs> but I didn't even get an invitation. Lies. This conversation won't go anywhere if you keep saying I lied. I see. So you're going to pretend you didn't get it no matter what, huh? I'm not pretending, though. We can't seem to agree, so you don't need to reply to my invitation anymore. You're going to come to my wedding. You have to. Then at least tell me the date and place. No matter what you say, it won't change the fact that it really didn't come. I don't know who the groom is, when the wedding will be, or where it's going to take place, so I won't be able to come even if I wanted to. I'm telling you that it's written on the invitation. It's no use lying to me that you didn't get it. Read the invitation. Make sure to come to the wedding ceremony, and make sure to congratulate me and my fiancé with a smile on your face. But I didn't get it. You're getting annoying now. It's pathetic how you're trying to go through this lie. <laughs> Bye. Looks like you haven't changed in these five years. Hi, sister. You're the venue already, right? By venue, do you mean wedding venue? Of course. <laughs> I did arrive at the venue, but it's none of your business. What are you talking about? Of course it's my business. It's my wedding. <laughs> um, don't tell me you're going to tell me to do things on my wedding, are you? What do you mean tell you to do things? You're here to ruin my wedding, right? What? It's so hilarious how you came to my wedding to take back your ex-boyfriend from me. <laughs> what? My ex-boyfriend? But I'm not going to let you have him. What in the world are you talking about? You're at the wedding venue in End City, right? That's what I wrote in the invitation, after all. <laughs> what are you talking about? How many times do I have to tell you I never got an invitation? And how many times do I have to tell you it's no use lying to me like that? <laughs> hey, Anissa, could it be the case that today's your wedding? Of course it is. You're at the wedding venue already, right? What are you trying to do asking me whether it's my wedding? <laughs> but I have a surprise for you. That's not actually the wedding venue. Um... You don't get it yet. 
The wedding invitation I sent you was a special one made for you specifically. I wrote a completely different wedding venue on just your invitation. It's an actual place, so there's a low risk that you find out. I mean, you actually did go, right? <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> Too bad you didn't get to steal your ex-boyfriend back. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you while you seem to be having so much fun, but I just met with a groom earlier. What? We're going to a bridal fair that's being hosted at a wedding venue in the capital. What? The capital? I wrote End City on your invitation. I couldn't see it since it never came. The reason I came to the wedding venue is because I'm supposed to meet my boyfriend, who I'm going to marry, here for the bridal fair. What? What do you mean, a bridal fair? What are you talking about? But me and the groom are already at the wedding venue. Oh my god, you still don't understand? Understand what? Your groom and my groom are two different people. What? I've told you this over and over, but I've never received your invitation, which means I don't know who your groom is or where the wedding venue is. I don't even know today was your wedding until now. What are you talking about? I couldn't ask mom and dad either since they have me blocked on their phones. What? They blocked you? Both mom and dad loved you more than me, right? I hated that house, so I left as soon as I graduated high school. After a while without texting them, I noticed that they had blocked me. What? I thought that you left home and moved to a different town because you were in shock that I stole your boyfriend. Huh? But I didn't even have a boyfriend in high school. What? That's a lie. You were going out with Peter, right? What? Peter? I knew that you and Peter were a couple, so Peter comes from a very wealthy family, and I thought it was so unfair that he was your boyfriend, which is why I stole him. Oh, Peter was the guy from the other class you thought was my boyfriend, right? The one you told everyone was my boyfriend? What? I thought he was your boyfriend? I only saw him at the student council meetings, though. Yes, but you were always sitting next to him at those meetings, right? Whenever I took a peek at the room the meetings were being held, he would always be sitting next to you. I don't know why you would watch those meetings, but I'll put that aside for now. We were supposed to sit in order of class at those meetings, so he would always sit next to me since he was from the class next door. Huh? So that's why? Those were the only times I would meet him during high school. Then, who in the world is your fiancé? I guess I should tell you his name. My fiancé is Fyodor. Uh, the vocal for the school's rock band? Yes, that guy. He works from home, so he didn't hesitate coming with me every time I moved. It's been decided that I would be working at the company headquarters from now on, so we're going to get married because it seems that I'm finally going to be able to stay in one place. No way. That's completely different too. Alla, cut my wedding right now. What? I told you before, right? Peter's family is a very high-class family. I can't be thought of as having a heartless and inconsiderate sister that won't come to my wedding. But didn't you write a fake venue on just my wedding invitation? I would have told them that I came up with a plan to make sure you didn't come to my wedding, since you would try and steal my groom who was also your ex-husband. I thought that they would approve of this. Um, I don't think so. And I'm not even his ex-girlfriend either. But I thought that you were. Um, sorry, but the bridal fair is about to start. Uh, it seems I was never actually invited in the first place. And it's strange how you've been texting me for so long, even though you're the bride of the wedding and should be really busy. Something must be happening over there. I don't want to get involved in whatever it is, and I don't intend on going ever going back home either since I already cut ties with you three. Ala? Well, that's it. Bye. Hold on. This is going to be a problem for me. Mm. Please come here, Ala. Mm. My dad isn't going to get paid at this rate. I already bought a lot of things thinking Peter would share his money with me. Mom and Dad, too. They bought new bags and went on an overseas vacation and stuff. If I don't get married now, it's going to be a big problem. So please come. All you have to do is pretend like we get along. Mm. Ala! It seems Anise's wedding was canceled after all. Peter's family knew why I was distant with my family, and they were going to decide what they would do with Anissa by seeing how they treated me once I came to the wedding. But on the day of the wedding, they found out that Anissa had sent me a wedding invitation with the wrong address. Not only that, but even after being told that I never got an invitation, she insisted that I was lying and didn't do anything about it. 
After seeing how cruel my sister was to me, they decided that the marriage between Peter and Anissa was going to be canceled. Thanks to Peter's family's kindness, Anissa and her parents were exempted from having to pay for the wedding ceremony. But it seems that both Anissa and her parents had been counting on Peter's money and splurged on a variety of expensive things. The three of them, now in huge debt, were taken away by some shady business, and no one has heard of them since. Marvin, uh, right now I don't have the money to send you off to college. Did you end up taking the entrance exam anyway, even after I told you this once already before? Huh? Even if you have luck on your side and pass that exam, I promised you that I'd only be able to pay to support you for a while longer, and that meant you are not going to college. Jesus, I cannot believe that you've gone ahead and done that, even with me saying no. Mom, what are you even going on about right now? I thought I already discussed with you that I'm going to be getting a bit of scholarship money to help me out my first two years. Huh? A year ago before Dad went overseas for work, I was discussing all of this with him, and you were with us there as well. The only one that seemed to be interested in what I was talking about was Dad at the time, but you did tell me congrats on the money, and that as long as whatever I was doing didn't get in the way of Kara, I was free to do it. I said that? I understand that with the illness that Kara has had, it's forced you and dad to put a lot of money into her treatments, and those treatments have been going on for years now. And that's the reason why I've been trying my best and have made it to a point where I'll receive a bit of scholarship money from the state. Yet, you still want me to give up on going to college? I told you that right after graduating from high school to get yourself a job and start making money for this family. After all those times of you talking down to your siblings for never going to college and only ever working your whole lives, are you going to ask your own son to do the same as them? Well, that's... that's a different story. Sure it is. I get that for the longest time now. While Kara has been so sick and in the hospital a lot of the time, you've been stressed out about life and take it out a lot on others. But Kara is getting better now and you need to start thinking about changing how you think about things with the rest of us moving forward. I get it though, you still care a whole lot more about her than me and will do anything to make sure she lives the life she wants. Even going and asking me to give up on my dreams of going to college for some reason you don't even agree with. Well, if you understand how I'm feeling right now. But mom, I'm her older brother, and I'm not going to waste my potential by not going to school to gain a degree. I want to do well for myself, not just for better money, but so that I can support Kara as well if she ever needs something from me later in life. And that's why I want to go to college and study even more. I want to learn about all sorts of things and hope to one day find an amazing job where I can put all I've learned to use. Me going to college isn't just about me, Mom. It's about more than just me. It's about making sure that Kara has a safe future as well. I get that I don't have the most outstanding scores in the world, but with this money I'm getting from the state, and with my chances of at least getting in, I think I'll be okay. So please... Stop trying to control what I do by saying that you don't have the money to pay for me or that you want me to work for your sake. I get it. Well, as long as you're not going to cause any problems for Kara, then go right ahead and go to school. You really need to learn how to talk to your mom correctly, though. Marvin, did you get yelled at by your mom again? Hmm? Well, I was sitting in front of the TV doing my rehabilitation work when I heard her talking about you in the kitchen. Ah, uh, you're talking about what just happened between us. Well, Mom was just trying to tell me that going to college would cost her a lot of money, and that's why she didn't want me going. But then I asked her if she'd forgotten about how I spoke with her and Dad about me getting a scholarship for two years, and that she wouldn't have to worry about paying for me. However, after mentioning that, she told me I should be working after high school to make money for the family. Then I told her about how she always spoke poorly of her family because they all went right to work after high school instead of going to college, and how it's odd she'd asked me to do the same. Well, that seemed to have upset her a bit, but she wasn't able to make any more comments. Ah, so that's what that was all about then. Mom really doesn't have a clue about how hard you've been working to get into college and everything without having to pay too much. Does she not even realize that you've been the one homeschooling me this whole time while I've been sick and you've only just gotten a break from it now after I started to feel better and got back into the public schools? I'm sure she doesn't care, but I'm really glad to hear that you're doing well in school with all those other kids now. So, thank you for being such a close listener as a... So, 
<laughs> thank you for being such a close listener as my student. Well, thank you for teaching me. And to be honest, I kind of like being your teacher. It helped me learn and train a bit about what it's really like to be a teacher. And that's something I'll be able to utilize later in life. But still, I'm thankful that you were there to teach me after you got out of school. No problem. Marvin, I'm going to assume that the graduation ceremony is over now? It's all finished. And as I thought, you didn't even bother coming to see me there. I can understand Dad not being there, as he's on the other side of the globe for work currently. But the only person in my grade that didn't have anyone come to see their graduation was me. Is that so? Well, that's not of any interest at the moment. Right now, I have something to tell you now that you're no longer in school. What? Sometime before the end of the day, I want you to get out of my house. Pardon me? And the reason for this is because Kara is asking it. Kara wants me to leave the house? Kara has told me that she wants to be an only child now at home, so she's asked me to have you gone from the house. Huh? Why would she ever say such a hurtful thing about me? There's no way she actually said that. But she did. She did. And as for myself, I only believe that she's my true child, and that you're just some straggler. In other words, I don't need you in my life, Marvin. So don't even bother coming back home anymore. Hmm? If that's what you want, I guess I don't really care that I have to leave the house now. I've already taken most of my things out of my room anyway, so this isn't a problem at all. Huh? Are you going to say that you didn't notice a thing? Well, I guess I'll have to get you up to date on this. The college that I'll be going to in September is about seven hours away from home. Huh? Seven hours? In other words, you have zero clue what college your son is about to be going to, do you? Um... Well, I don't really care if you know where I go or not. Well, that's all I have to say to you. Goodbye forever, ex-mom. Good morning, Marvin. I'm assuming that yesterday you were able to make it safely to an apartment near the college that you'll be attending this fall, right? Good morning, Kara. That's right. Right after my graduation ceremony ended, I got into my car with a lot of my things and made the seven-hour trip to the apartment. I just had myself a small breakfast and am now starting on cutting into all of the boxes I brought along and setting my new place up. Well, while you're at it, I'll be taking Mom off your hands and going out to play with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be waiting then. And by the way, what did you do about the name on that apartment? Hmm? Well, one of my friend's sisters who works for the realty business explained a lot of this to me in depth. She explained that since you're only just going into college, it might be hard for you to get an apartment on your own, both legally and because the school might not allow it. Ah, uh, well, now that you brought that up, I forgot to mention that to either you or Mom. Well, I guess I really couldn't mention it at the time, but anyway, the name on this place is Dad's. Uh, is that right? Actually, back in May, he came back to America for a month and was in town to see me. And while he was around, he came and helped me with all the things required to get me into this place. Hmm, that's a bit unexpected. I understand that Mom is probably trying to get you to think that Dad is some kind of selfish man that doesn't really care all too much about us. But he's actually quite the opposite. He was very happy to come back to town to help me with the apartment, and he even paid for my first few months of rent. Is that right? And it'll only be another three months or so before he comes back from overseas for good and we'll be living back in the States. So during that time, if you ever feel that you need someone to come and help you and mom's being a jerk about it, make sure to ask dad for help because I'm sure he'll come right to you. You think so? All right then. Ah, uh, and within another year or so, I think I will have the ability to break out of this place for good. In only another year? Well, when I'm old enough to get into high school, I should be able to make a plea to live on my own. And so I'm aiming for that time right now, so that everything goes smoothly and I can get the heck out of here. And I'm sure that will all be made easier if Dad and you are able to lend me a hand when I need it, you know? After all, when I leave her, I might need a place to stay, or at least a small amount of financial help. I'm not sure what all you plan on doing there. I'm still thinking through a lot of the details, so when I know more about what I want to do, I'll let you know. Are you really planning to start playing tennis at high school? Ah, you must have heard about that from Dad. 
You can't do that. I want you to enter the debate club, please. Why should I go into debate? Because your body is far too weak right now for you to be playing any sports at all. And something like tennis. You need a lot more strength to play a sport like that. Well, from what I've heard the doctor tell me, I'm no longer sick and can get back to being a normal kid. You used to be in choir back when you were in middle school. You don't even want to join that club again. But in choir club, I still had to move around on stage a lot for some of the performances. What? Having to sing already uses a lot of one's strength, and then having to dance around at times and also stand up on stage for hours at a time. When we practiced after school, we'd even do a little bit of exercising to maintain proper muscle and everything for our shows. Excuse me? What did you think you were doing back then? You were so weak and still are, and they were making you exercise and all that? Well, that's why I'm saying this now. I've been over my sickness for over three years now, and a lot of my strength has come back to me, making me feel even better than ever. And that's partially due to me being able to exercise during choir back then. I understand you wanting to feel worried about me since I was sick for so long and without a whole lot of strength, but I'm no longer as weak as I was then and am ready to move on. I've already moved on, actually. But listen, Kara, going into something like tennis means you'll be busy all week long practicing. And you'll have to go to practice and games on the weekends. And another thing, I was finally able to get rid of that Marvin guy that kept living in our house all these years, so we finally have time to be together with one another in this house without anyone bothering us. So don't waste all that time that we could be spending together on something like tennis. Huh? What did you just say? Did you just say that Marvin was getting in our way? My brother? Your son? You told me a while back that you wanted to become an only child, right? And you and I both never really thought of Marvin as being a part of this family, right? Are you freaking kidding me, Mom? Was that something I said to you years and years ago when I was in the middle of being deathly ill? Because that sounds to me like something I said when going through all those treatments and being on loads of medication. Well, if I did say something like that, I didn't mean it at all. What do you mean? I mean that I probably meant to say something else. Like how it felt like I was an only child because Marvin had to sacrifice his time to become another parent of mine. Maybe I meant that had I never been born, Marvin could have lived a better life at home with his mother. Huh? Of course, right now, I don't think anything like that anymore, and I'm very happy that I had someone like Marvin as my older brother to be around the house all day with me. It's because of him stepping in to homeschool me that I was able to get right back into public schooling when the doctors let me out of the hospital and allowed me to start moving on my own. And as for the high school exams that he had to focus on while doing all of that for me, you told him he couldn't study for those exams because he had to be at home to take care of me while you went off somewhere. So you know what he did? He stayed up all night on the computer after I fell asleep and studied his butt off. And then when it came time to help me study, he'd forgot about all his work and only focused on me. Um, and guess what else? While he was so focused on making sure my grades were okay and that I'd be able to make it to high school, he was still working his butt off for his college entrance exam and even passed those too. I'm seriously going to be forever grateful to him after all those years he had to sacrifice for me, while also finding ways to keep pushing himself forward. Kara! And so to help make going to high school a lot easier for myself, I'll be moving to Marvin's apartment and leaving this town. Huh? You're moving out? Actually, I already had all my stuff moved out of the house and am currently on a plane heading to him. I told him that the STEM-based school near his college is where I wanted to go, and so he offered that I stay at his place while going there. What are you even talking about, Kara? I know for a fact that you'll be starting class soon at the high school in town with all your friends, right? This has been the high school you've been wanting to go to for a long time now, right? Huh? Are you sure about that? I get that you wanted me to go there since it was in town and has a really good debate team which you wanted me on. But I told you already that I someday want to become an engineer, and that's why I'm going to a school that focuses on that style of learning. Excuse me? Ah, the plane is going to land soon, so the plane Wi-Fi will cut off at any moment now. Thank you for all those years of taking care of me. Kara! Bye-bye! <coughs> 
Marvin! You took my little girl from me! What the heck do you think you're doing, taking her from me? She was the one that told me she applied to go to the STEM school here this fall. Excuse me? Have you all forgotten just how much I devoted and worked to care for Carl while she was deathly sick and needed me? Devoted, huh? What's with that? I don't think I'll have another chance to say this after today, so I'll let you know right now. I'm not sure if you understand that when you say you've devoted yourself to her, you actually just mean you want to use her as a way to make yourself feel good. Like you use the fact that you helped her to control her and the rest of us. Huh? What the hell does that mean? When Carl was in the hospital getting treated and at home from time to time, you were always the one that went to be with her the most. But you were only ever there, and that's all. Huh? I was always with her the moment she had to be admitted to the day they finished working on her, right? It's not like someone with no knowledge of medicine could do anything more for her besides be with her, right? So that's what I did. And it's very important that you would go be with her to talk to her and such. But from what she's told me about you, you would rarely ever let her speak, instead going on tangents about yourself and the life you have. And at times when other families would be there with their sick relatives, you'd begin to speak louder so that everyone had to hear about you and your sick daughter. And sometimes, what you start yelling about wasn't even appropriate for the hospital, and you caused all those other families a lot of stress. Remember that it wasn't just you going to the hospital to see Kara, and when I would go in, I'd have to apologize for everything you'd do. Huh? I had a lot of families and doctors and nurses tell me, I must live a very tough life at home with you, since you had your high schooler son apologizing for the way you behaved. And another thing, you seem to forget a lot of the most basic things when it came to caring for your daughter, bringing things like new clothes and stuff for her to change into. Huh? It took a lot of effort from both dad and I to have to help with all of Kara's laundry, especially when she was becoming a teen and she began to change. Normally, someone like you should be in charge of that, but you never seem to think about Kara's needs. So at one point, Grandma realized that Dad and I needed help and would start stopping by the hospital to grab her dirty clothes and clean them for us. She was doing that? Also, the reason for Dad having to start working overseas wasn't something he chose to do out of his own wants. He didn't choose to leave us to try and escape from caring for Kara, but rather to get the pay increase that came from it so that we could afford her treatments. Wait, that was his reason for leaving? And when it comes to Kara's schooling, I was the one who had to school her for most of her time in the hospital and at home because she wasn't able to go to school anymore, right? Well, I never once saw you teaching her anything from those homeschool kits. The only reason you never saw me teaching her anything is because you hated being around me when I was with her. So you only chose to go to the hospital or come in the room when I wasn't around. But I... So, what did you do, Mom? Can you give me some concrete examples of what you did to care for her? Well, I... I'm sure you can't give me an answer, can you? I already gave the answer to that question. So now all you're left with is empty words. So do you understand now why things are the way they are? But I'm Kara's mother. It looks like Kara will be arriving here in just a few minutes. Huh? Don't worry about it. You can leave everything to do with Kara in my hands now. See ya. You hold it right there, Marvin. I already bragged to all the other moms in my friend group about how she'd be going and joining the debate team at the high school in town. I made it seem as though she would be the most amazing student ever there as well. After years of having to battle her sickness with the help of her mother, she's still able to go to high school and win debates for her school. That would be amazing, right? Right? I have to be able to show all those people that my daughter is going to those debate tournaments and to school with great grades. If I can't, then there will be no reason for me to brag about her. Hey, uh, can you try and convince her into coming back here and going to school? Marvin, give me back my girl! <laughs> when I began to think that was her final text to me, my mom would then send another asking me to give Kara back to her. So to keep myself from losing my sanity, I blocked her number. And as for my father and what he'd do about mom, he ended up divorcing her about a month after that. It turns out that my father was able to come work at an office in town near my college in Kara's high school, and so he's been able to meet with her whenever she gets out of class. He's living on his own right now outside of town, but every once in a while we all get together to go out for dinner or something and catch up. 
and then there's a story of what's happened to my mom since then. After learning about her, her husband divorced her, and having lost both her kids, she decided to leave her house and go back to her hometown. But a lot of people back home didn't like her very much anymore, and not a single person came to her side as she cried for help. These days, I think she's still back in her hometown working pretty basic jobs, but I can't be too sure of that since I haven't heard anything about her now. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story. Hey Shannon, it's been five years, right? Who is this? Huh? You know me, right? Stop joking around. We miraculously reunited today, didn't we? What are you talking about? Please tell me your name or I won't know what you're talking about. Fine, I'll tell you. It's me, Tariq. Huh? Your ex-husband, Tariq? Uh, how do you have my account information? You seriously? You don't know yet? You came to the entrance ceremony at the kindergarten yesterday, right? Um, the entrance ceremony? Your child goes to the same kindergarten as mine? Yep, she's my second child. It seems that my daughter is in a different class as your daughter, though. But it seems like a child of my wife's friend is in the same class as your child, so... So you must have exchanged contact information with her. She gave your contact information to my wife, which is how I got it. Could you not hand out my contact information like that? Calm down. I have no intention of getting back together with you or something. My wife knows I have your contact information, so there's no need to worry. Your wife is Sarah, right? The woman you cheated on me with five years ago, which was the cause of our divorce and also an old friend of mine. It's obvious she finds the situation hilarious. Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, I think it's hilarious as well. Don't contact me anymore. What? I guess it can't be helped if we see each other at the kindergarten, but I have no intention of being friendly with you two. Bye. Hmm. This gets more and more hilarious the more I think about it. If you who was infertile were at the kindergarten then that must mean that you married someone who already had children. Huh? Even if you come to the entrance ceremony pretending to be a mother, it's not your actual child, so it's a bit funny thinking about it. So you still think I'm infertile? But you couldn't bear a child in the three years that we were together, right? Mom said that if a woman can't bear a child in three years, then she must be infertile. But I never even gotten myself tested for infertility. It must have just been bad timing. But the truth is that you couldn't have a child, which means that you're infertile. You knew this, and that's why you married a single father, right? I'm my husband's first wife, and the child that was born between us is also his first child. Stop being delusional. I'm delusional? Yeah, these are the sad fantasies of a woman who can't give birth. You really are strange. Fine. Our children go to the same kindergarten, so we'll probably see each other again whether we want to or not. So I'll tell this to you now to prevent any misunderstandings in the future. What is it? I've already given birth to three children. Huh? My eldest son who's three years old, the one who came to the entrance ceremony yesterday, and two twin daughters who were half a month ago. Huh? You're infertile but have three children? That means your husband had three children with his previous wife, right? Stop making weird excuses, it's confusing. I gave birth to all three of them. But you're infertile and... I told you that I gave birth after we divorced. Do you not understand that what I'm trying to say is that I'm not infertile? Huh? You gave birth to them? Yes, that's what I told you multiple times. Oh, and it's not like I underwent some sort of infertility treatment. I gave birth to them naturally. Uh, then why didn't you get pregnant in the three years you were married to me? Why are you asking me that? Tell me. All I know is that there were no problems with my body. You think about what other possibilities there might have been. Goodbye. Because of you, my wife took my children and went to her parents' house. What? Don't get me involved in your fights, please. I'm not involved in you. This is your fault. I wanted to find out whether you had actually given birth to your son, so... I dropped off and picked up my child to and from kindergarten as much as possible so I could have a chance to meet you. Oh, you're talking about 10 days after the entrance ceremony, right? I was with my husband, right? 
Yes, that husband. I tried to talk to you, but as I tried to approach, he suddenly appeared from behind your back. I thought I hadn't seen him before, and so I looked closely at his face, which is when I noticed that he was the executive director at my office. Apparently, I only found out when he told me after we got married. I know that he has a son the same age as my daughter. When I heard that his wife gave birth to twin daughters a few months ago, does that mean that what you were saying was true? I see. So that's why you ran off without even talking to me, your face pale. I haven't seen you since, but I'm not complaining. Something terrible has happened to me. What? I did a bit of research after that and found out that men being infertile is more common than I thought. I did a DNA test with my child. The result was, well, he was my child. Oh, good for you. Yeah, but my wife found that I had done a DNA test behind her back and she got furious at me for suspecting her of cheating. Oh, and that's why she took your children and went to her parents' house. But I don't see how that has anything to do with me. If you hadn't said anything strange, I would have never have done a DNA test. Um, wouldn't this have never happened if you never bothered me in the first place? Then why did you reply to my text? Because you still insisted that I was infertile, and you even said that my husband was a single father or something. Don't you think it was only natural for me to get annoyed and correct you? But you were supposed to be infertile. You were just being delusional. If you have the time to complain to me like this, then why don't you make up with your wife instead? Bye. This is so unfair. You're so much less attracted than me, but you're the wife of an executive director? And to think that he works at the same company as Tariq. To think that she would get married with someone even better than Tariq after he threw you away. I stole Tyreek from you, only for you to find someone even better. Unfair. That's so unfair. I'm going to steal this new husband of yours. I can't do this anymore. Huh? My family's on the verge of collapse again. Oh, you're talking about how Sarah tried to seduce my husband into going to a hotel together, right? I heard that Sarah was a newly hired part-time worker at you and my husband's client company. Apparently, my husband filed a complaint, so it's only a matter of time before she gets fired, though. What is this? Ever since I met you at the kindergarten again, my life has been crumbling apart piece by piece. You're making this my fault again? Is this a hobby of yours or something? Why did you put your child into that kindergarten? Did you do it on purpose? You were jealous of me and Sarah and... I don't have the enough time on my hands for such stupid matters. You're saying this is stupid? Yes, no matter how you look at it. What? Why don't you calm down and think about this logically? It just happened to be the case that we enrolled our children in the same kindergarten. I didn't do anything to you. Do you understand that? Uh-oh. Which means that if you hadn't went out of your way to get my contact information just to annoy me, this never would have happened. Don't make me repeat myself over and over. Uh, Shannon, I turned in my divorce papers earlier. So could you get divorced as well and get back together with me? Huh? Let's just give custody of our children to our current partners and give birth to children of our own. It seems that neither of us are infertile, so you were getting a bit old to give birth, but you can handle one more, right? Jesus, will you seriously never leave me alone? What? Um, it's been medically proven that too much stress makes it more difficult to have children. What? What are you trying to say? Don't you get it? Huh? You bothering me like this all the time is a huge source of stress. Uh... Your parents were the same when they were living with us. My parents? Yes, they were just like you. Every time I met them, the first thing they would say was, give us a grandchild. They would tell me this more than a dozen times each day, which almost drove me to insanity. But they never said that to Sarah. Of course they didn't. What? You have an older child, right? Sarah got pregnant with this child, which is also why you divorced me. They wouldn't tell her to give birth to a grandchild if she already did, would they? Judging by what you said earlier, it seems that Sarah got custody of the child, so if I were to marry you again, I would be thrust back into the same hell as before with them telling me to give them a grandchild over and over. Why would I do that? Fine, I'll keep an eye on them and make sure they don't say that to you anymore. But I have no intention of divorcing my husband, and I have no intention of letting go of my children either. What? Really? Why did you even think that I want to get back together with you in the first place? There's no chance no matter how you look at it. Yeah, but if the two of us loved each other enough... 
I lost my last ounce of love for you when I found out you cheated on me with Sarah. What? Then what should I do now? I already got divorced. I don't know. Just open the front door, will you? What? I came to pick you up. I know that the executive director doesn't go to work on Mondays. This is our chance to make an escape without being bothered. Come on, I'm outside the backyard. I can come in if I break the window in the living room. Hold on. If I could just get a hold of you for a day, then you'll have no choice but to get divorced. Um, are you an idiot? Huh? Is that how you talk to your husband? If the executive director doesn't go to work on Mondays, then he isn't at the office now, right? Yeah, that's why... Then doesn't that mean there's a high probability that he's currently at home? In fact, he is. Huh? Uh... Apparently he's going to tell the company about this. No way. We already called the police, by the way. I hear sirens. There's no use trying to run anymore. Goodbye. I didn't expect that he would try and break in our house and get caught by the police. Not long after that, Tyreek was fired from his job. We received an alimony from Tyreek and Sarah, and after that placed a restraining order on them. I haven't seen them since. Apparently, both of their families got involved in a fight over who would get custody of their children. Since neither of the parents were functioning adults, the grandparents of the children had to settle things for them. Each family would gain custody of one child, and they would be adopted by relatives. The relatives of both Tyreek and Sarah cut ties with their families. It seems the six of them, Tyreek, Sarah, and their four parents, all are currently unemployed. There are eyewitness accounts saying that they were living together under a bridge, but it's uncertain where they really went. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.